Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 10.3 Beta 1. This is a pretty minor update visually, but a pretty major one behind the scenes. It came in at 2 gigabytes, and that's pretty normal for a 10.123 update. Let's take a look at the build number quick. You'll see it's build 14E5230E, and this particular build basically changes the whole file system underneath. Now this is not a visual change, this is a way the iPhone as a whole works, or the operating system as a whole works. The file system they were using is a derivative of something that's 30 years old from 1985 with HFS. They updated it in 1998 to HFS Plus, and now we have APFS or Apple file system that they released with this beta. Now this is pretty major in that the old file system isn't designed to handle things like solid state drives or large storage. They have to use workarounds for that to work properly. So this is designed from the ground up to handle solid state drives, huge storage, and that makes it more power efficient in theory. And it also adds safety and encryption and all sorts of things like that that makes it much more robust durable as far as data integrity is concerned. So it should be pretty significant. Now with that, you wanna be careful. If you're going to update to these betas, make sure you do a backup first because going from HFS Plus to Apple file system is a pretty major move and it could have issues in the future. So you don't wanna be afraid to actually update this and then wipe your phone at some time and then restore from the beginning all over again. So don't be afraid to do that if you're going to be updating this. Now along with this update, when it restarted, it gave me an iCloud analytics screen. It pops up. It's actually a bug that they note in the notes that it's just a known issue or a bug. They'll fix it later on. Now, one of the other major updates they did is add Find My AirPods. So if you have AirPods, you can find these now in Find My Phone. Let me show you how that works. My AirPods are connected to my phone and say I lose one of them. What I can do to find them is play a sound. So we'll do that. So that's a small or quiet sound. Let me bring it up to the microphone so you can hear a little bit better. So it plays that sound, you can stop it or get driving directions to it. So that's a nice feature that they added. And there was an app that did that, that Apple kicked off the app store. And that's usually why when they're going to implement it themselves. Now, the other changes are pretty small. They've added a podcast widget, and that's probably the first time this has actually stuttered. Normally, this doesn't stutter at all. It's been incredibly fast for a first beta, especially with a new file system. And that file system should add speed, so things have been really nice and quick. Now, the other thing they've done is add support for Safari to use reduced motion if that setting is on. And one of the nice things is there's a security section within settings, so let me show you that. So if we go to settings, you'll see here we have password and security. And what that means, maybe in the future, we'll have multiple user accounts on something such as iPads or maybe other devices. So if we go into password and security, we have a couple options, notification email, two-step verification, things like that. So that's really nice as well. Now, unfortunately, there's no dark mode in this particular update. And I don't think there's going to be for quite some time. Apple came out with what's called theater mode, but it's for the Apple Watch and a future update. And what that does is basically blank the screen out and just notify you via the haptic feedback on your wrist. So if that's happening, the screen will be blank and it won't distract people in the theater. That's all theater mode is. Dark mode would make more sense if they put an OLED or AMOLED screen that basically turns off the black pixels so that it doesn't use energy. That would make more sense when an OLED screen comes out and we may see that maybe with the next iPhone or iOS 11. One of the small changes they've made is HomeKit now supports programmable light switches, so that's pretty nice as well. They've also done some things that aren't really obvious up front, but people have discovered in the code. You see how we have the clock icon and it actually moves and changes. Same with the calendar if you're using Apple's calendar app, but developers don't have access to that and people have found that in the code they may have access in the future. They've also found a floating keyboard for iPads in the code as well. So that's something that we may look forward to as well. They've also updated the app store so that developers can actually prompt people to review their app and keep them in the app itself. Instead of bringing them back to the app store, they can review it in the app itself and 
that makes it much easier. They can also respond to those app reviews. So maybe someone has a bug, they report it, and they can let you know they're working on it. So that should be a nice update and has been around on Android for a while. So that's, that's nice to see them add that to iOS as well. Within the map application, there's also a new 3D touch action on the weather. You can get weather up to the hour just by pushing and holding on that. So that's nice. They've added that really simple there. They've also added some functionality for Siri. It didn't know cricket scores. So if you're into cricket, now it will update cricket scores from the Indian Premier League and the International Cricket Council. There's some new features in CarPlay as well. CarPlay has some new icons on the side. I took some screenshots off of my Apple CarPlay stereo, and I can review that later if you want. Just let me know in the comments below. But they did some new updates that allow you to have more app launching or quick switching between apps on the left. You've got three now instead of just one. And it also features EV charge stations. If you search for them, you can find them all over the place. So that's nice also. They did a quick update in mail where conversation view also has some improved navigation. I didn't see a whole lot of that and I don't have a whole lot of threads, but that's there as well. There's also a couple more issues that are noted that they said iCloud backups may not work. Lightning video adapters might not work. Managed devices might have issues with remote updates. iCloud document sync and shared iPad settings may not work. And Siri kit car commands may not work. So there's a lot of bugs to be careful with with this particular update, but it adds some substantial things underneath and I think it's really nice to have that new file system. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, I'll leave a link to the wallpaper in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.